all here from Generation Schools Network, which is a nonprofit dedicated to transforming education. Uh, we do that in a few different ways. We have a handful of schools that we've helped start from the ground up. So Brooklyn Generation School is a high school in New York City uh, in its seventh year of operation. West Generation Academy in Denver is a six through 12 school in its third year of operation. And Cincinnati Generation Academy is a K through eight school in its first year of operation here in Cincinnati. Uh, in addition to those schools, we have some consulting relationships, uh, whether it's with schools or school districts or um, organizations like Mayerson. So have uh, a few different ways that we're interacting uh, with teachers and administrators and um, all towards the end of making schools more successful to help students succeed in school work and life. Um, so I am going to pass it over to this lovely lady to my left to tell you a little bit about who she is. So uh, my name is Katie Peaton. I am the implementation manager for Cincinnati. So basically my role is to uh, use the model and the resources that are set forth by the organization and make sure that that's being implemented as well as I can in the school in Cincinnati. Um, but it, in addition, I do a lot of work with like curriculum development and other things that uh, are specific to Ohio as well. Um, so I am from Ohio originally, and I went to Miami University for undergrad in management education, and then I went to work as a high school English teacher. Uh, and I did it for two years. I had all grades 9 through 12 in, a, in an interstate school in Cincinnati. And then I was an administrator there for four years. Um, so I started doing a lot of scheduling and school redesign and uh, teacher recruitment and a lot of different initiatives at that school. And there's a couple pictures up here of me. And the first one is I used to be a trip leader for an organization. Uh, this is actually in Yosemite. Um, and it's, this, this really uh, kind of shows a, little, a lot of what's important to me that we do at Generation Schools Network, which is authentic and experiential learning. So I want to try and help teachers redesign their classrooms so that they're doing projects, they're participating in authentic learning experiences. Uh, and I do a lot of that with kids in the outdoors. So this is like an outdoor adventure program um, that's actually also based in Colorado, um, but we, I went throughout a variety of places in the American West. And there's just all my kids. I think they're great and they're smiling. Um, and then on the right is one of my high schoolers when I was a teacher. And uh, on this day, it was like a spirit week. I think I was supposed to be some kind of 80s Michael Jackson type character on this day. I think it was like an 80s day uh, activity. And so that was really exciting for me as well because I like to dress up and show the kids that I'm crazy and fun and funky, which is a good way to um, form relationships that I want to talk a lot about today. Hi guys, my name is Leslie. It's really good to meet you guys. Um, I work in, D in the Denver office as well, and I am the coordinator of community partners and volunteers. So working to get volunteers in the school to support with different things, as well as different businesses in the area or other nonprofits that work with youth that want to serve in our school. Um, I also support the advocacy program, which is what we'll be talking about today, um, helping develop the curriculum and trainings and things like that. So I got interested in the nonprofit education world because um, after college and grad school, I worked in nonprofits and then as a teacher. And I really liked both of those things. So when I found Generation Schools Network and found that it was a nonprofit that worked with schools, I thought that was wonderful. Um, I threw a couple of pictures up there to share with you guys about myself. It's a little hard to see, they're a little dark, but the one on the left is when I was um, a teacher, I lived in Costa Rica and was a teacher at a school there um, for science and language arts. Um, and so that's one of my classes. And then on the right is when I worked um, with nonprofits. I was living in Bolivia in South America for a year and worked with a nonprofit called International Justice Mission um, that worked with kids who had been trafficked or in abusive, um, in abusive situations that they needed social care and legal care. So that's just a picture of some of the, they call them cholitas who live in Bolivia. Awesome, and I am Mary. I've been with Generation Schools Network for two years. Uh, before that, I spent most of my career working in low-income communities and education in Detroit and Harlem, New York City, uh, in Ecuador, and in Nicaragua. Uh, and I was 
Part of what really drew me to Generation Schools Network is um, the advisory work that we're going to talk about today, um, the opportunity to integrate into the school day uh, intentional time for students to build relationships with one another and to build relationships with an adult that they can trust. Um, so I, I put a few pictures of uh, Liz up here. Liz is one of the young women I had the privilege of working with at a really small after school program called Street Squash in New York City. And this is a program that's uh, really near to my heart, um, provides long term intensive services to students. And uh, Liz is just someone I admire deeply um, for what she's accomplished in her life. Uh, when I first met Liz, she was about 12 years old, um, pretty shy and quiet young lady, um, had come from a pretty rough situation and was in foster care and moving from house to house on a regular basis, was really lacking um, stability and consistency in her life. Uh, and over uh, the period of time where she grew from a middle schooler to a high schooler, I really saw a transformation in her. Um, she became one of, I mean, just look at that smile. She was just this glowing, optimistic, motivated, um, incredible young woman. Uh, here she's winning the Urban Squasher of the Year Award her senior year in high school. And there she is at her freshman year at Franklin and Marshall College. Um, and then just this past spring graduating from Franklin and Marshall. And so um, some of what Liz was able to accomplish is a testament to who Liz is. Um, you know, she just has a really strong spirit. Uh, but I also think that a lot of what Liz was able to do in her life came from the relationships that she built um, through street squash, through her school, um, just having mentors, having a supportive peer environment uh, that really propelled her forward towards success and, and to create a different future from, for herself than uh, the life that she had known. And so um, I share these photos of Liz and Liz's story because um, this is the kind of stuff that really fires me up. And that's why I'm here today to talk to you guys because um, this is personal for me. Because I know building relationships with students is important because I've seen it happen and I've seen how it transforms people's lives. Um, not just Liz's life, but, but my own life transformed because uh, Liz is a part of it. So I'm super excited to be here to share all of this with you guys today. Um, and we are going to take some time to learn about who you are also. Um, so who wants to be brave and go first? Awesome. And if you can just share your name, where you teach, what you teach, and then um, why you think advisory is an important part of uh, the school day. Okay. I'm trying to remember that. <laughs> um, we'll help you. I'm Alicia Bercy. Uh I teach eighth grade Jenna and eighth grade honors at Gilbert A. Dater High School. Um, I ran out of, what is the... the Why is oh, advisory okay. important to you? Yeah. Um, advisory is important to me because I have always, in my own classroom, built a community where the kids know that they are respected and loved. And advisory is just a chance for me to, without veering too much off of my curriculum, be close to and mentor a group of children. So. Great. Great. Um, my name is Kelly Fink. I teach uh, actually on Alicia's team later. I am the eighth grade double A and um, Gen Ed uh, Algebra One teacher. Um, and basically, we try as a team to do the same values and routines with our advisories as Alicia just described. So, just building relationships and having someone that, you know, a mentor figure that they can go to, um, someone that's in closer contact with the parents. Mm -hmm. um, in some, in some cases, we are the, the mediator between other teachers and parents and just trying to get everyone on the same page as far as cooperation and collaborating with getting students motivated and et cetera. So. Great. Thanks so much, Kelly. I'm right in the middle. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at you. <laughs> my name is Tammy S. Jackson. I am at Robert Spidey Academy. I have seventh and eighth grade science. Um, this is our first year doing advisory which I guess is mostly everybody's first year. Um, the one thing about I'm seeing with advisory, because the way our classes were split up, even those kids that are normally in a self-contained special ed class, and it was so good to see mm -hmm. the student who hardly ever talk. He's talking, still low, still not as much, but he knew something one of my kids who thinks he's the king of mm -hmm. being smart did not know. 
and he was able to help that student <laughs> on the, the laptop because and it just made him feel good it made me feel good because usually he would just go sit by himself but now he's going to sit and he's actually participating and I don't have to tell him okay when you come in open up to this he just gets right to it that's great hmm. awesome thanks for sharing that Jamie I'm Nick Shaver. I work at Winthrow. I'm the eighth grade, a uh, seventh grade pre-algebra teacher. Recently, it's just switched. I used to be the seventh grade math encore last week. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, flexible, flexible. <laughs> um, and then why advisory is important? Yeah, I mean, it's our first year, of course, to do it as well, and it's been exciting. And I'm interested in learning more how to make it effective because a lot of our teachers are struggling with, with that. Great. Thanks, Nick. Uh, my name is Jean Markward, and I teach uh, seventh and eighth grade language arts and social studies at Clark Montessori. And uh, I guess the connection for us in a Montessori school is that we're always really looking at the whole child. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of things we have embedded to make sure we're getting at all of those facets. And I'm always anxious to hear more ideas. So I'm glad to be here. Great. Thanks, Jean. Um, my name is Savannah Rabel, and I do math and science with Jean um, at Clark. And I think advisory is important. Just I just feel like your number one thing when you walk into a classroom is building relationships with your kids. And so ha building relationships with them and helping them build relationships with each other is really important. Great. Thanks, Savannah. I am working with Freeman. I am an intervention specialist inclusionary for six, seventh, and eighth grade students that I'll name. Advisory to me is very important because when you take special education students and include them in general education classroom, you can distill nets upon the general education classroom students that a special ed education student is stupid hmm. and that they do different work and they have lower expectations than the general education students. So we're building relationships, learning to communicate, and to understand how, because we had a roundtable discussion today in regards to the bullying mm. and the questions, and they were able to understand, hey, I might hurt somebody from saying different things, and that how they also can say things that hurt teachers. Mm. And teachers Teachers are people? Right. Mm -hmm. And that teachers, lash out just like students do that if we get ourselves hurt sometimes we lash back out with them mm. and if we don't know that we hurt their feelings then how can we change great and i missed your name can you um mark lee screen mark Lees. thank you so excited that you're all here tonight um and and the final thing i want to add before we start diving into stuff is just you know we're here talking about advisory um but i hope it goes without saying that um building relationships with students uh, and helping students build relationships with one another is something that's important in all your classes, right? So the techniques, the strategies, the resources that we're going to talk about tonight, um, I hope will spill over into your humanities classes and your social studies classes and, and everything else you're doing. So just going to go quickly over the agenda. It's posted here um, as well, so you can always know where we are and what we're doing. Um, going to talk about our learning objectives. Um, we're going to do a little activity so that I can, we can all get a sense of what your advisory classes look like. Um, our main topic is stress learning and the role of the advisor. Um, so we'll spend some time listening to a radio story about that and doing some reflection. Uh, we're going to take a little break. Um, three hours is a long time, so don't get too comfortable. I'm going to have you up and moving and, um, you know, I'm hoping it'll fly by because you'll be having so much fun. Uh, and then we're going to talk about building authentic relationships with students and we're going to practice some techniques and routines that you can integrate into your advisory classroom to help facilitate that. And these are our learning objectives. Um, I'll just give you a second to read them to yourself. And they're also posted up here, so if at any point you're thinking, what is it I'm supposed to be learning today, here it is. Um, so anytime we do a training, just 
um, love to talk about, you know, we're, we're here together for three hours. We're sharing this space and this time and this learning experience. And um, what do we want to agree as a learning community that we're all going to do during this time? And so um, my go-to uh, agreement that I always propose is that we're all present, so that we're present with ourselves and with our colleagues and with the material. Um, you're all adults. If you have to go to the bathroom, please do so. Um, you know. If you're using technology, I hope it's for a reason related to the work that we're doing. Um, if you need to make a personal call or send some text messages or anything like that, um, I just ask that you take a step outside and then rejoin us uh, when you're ready to be engaged in what we're doing here. Um, does anybody have anything they'd like to add to that? Do we all feel good about this agreement? Give a thumbs up if you feel good about that. Awesome. One okay. thing that I would add um, is that you ask a lot of questions. Um, Great. We know from teaching that there are no questions that are bad. They help us to clarify. They help us to um, explain and move further. So anytime you have a question, please don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, and just jump on in and interrupt us. Don't let yeah, us talk sure. too much. We're going to have you guys up and moving and talking, so don't think we're going to stand up here and talk all the time. But this is your session, your learning opportunity, so just echoing what Katie says, definitely ask questions. Um, so we want a chance to learn about what you guys are doing um, in your classroom. So I'm just going to do a quick little activity here. If you can stand up if you have your advisory class at least once a week. At least once a week. Don't stand up if it's going to hurt you. <laughs> um, OK. At least twice a week? More than twice a week? More than three times a week? More than four times a week? Five times a week. OK. Hey. Good. Sometimes more. OK. Um, That's awesome. Good. OK. All right, so you guys, you guys can take a seat. Yeah. We have another one. This time, raise your right hand if you have fewer than 30 students in your advisory class. OK. Well, you guys sometimes have over 30 students in your advisory class? We, we have different ways yeah. that okay. we mix them up. That you mix okay. them up. OK. 30 students per teacher? Less. Less. Okay. So you can raise your hands. All right. Fewer than 25 students per teacher? Ooh. Fewer than 20? Okay. Fewer than 15? Fewer than 10? Okay. All right. So we have around 10 or more than t a little more than 10. 15. Cool. All right. Okay, um, this one is called Fist to Five, and this is something that you can use in your classes as a formative assessment as well um, to gauge students' understanding or comfort level with something. So a fist would be zero, and it's either like I'm really not sure about this or it's really bad. And then everything like one is a little bit better, two is you know understanding a little bit more, all the way up to five, which is a really good understanding or I feel really good about this. Um, so show me please a uh, fist to five. How well do you think your advisory is going right now? So fist would be it's going really terrible and I hate it. And a five would be, I love everything about it, and I have no questions. Great. So fours, fives, threes, lots of threes. That's good. Threes and fours. Great. Great. And we're going to do another fist to five. And this one is um, to represent how comfortable you feel in your role as an advisor. So zero, oh my gosh, I'm crawling in my skin. What am I doing? And five, this comes totally natural to me. I just feel completely at ease in this space. Awesome. And some threes, fours, and fives. Okay, so now we want to know if you teach middle school or if you teach high school. So if you teach middle school, put your hands on your head. If you teach high school, put your hands up in the air. All middle school. All middle school. Okay, great. Uh, so this one we're going to stand up again. If more than half of the students at your school qualify for free or reduced lunch. Okay. Okay. That's it. Thank you. And then uh, I want you to clap your hands if the majority of your students are students of color. Good. OK. And raise your left hand if this is your first year you've ever taught advisory. Just left hand. <laughs> yeah. hands. We really want you to think today. Good. OK. Thank you, guys. OK, great. Uh, and then the one day, more. You can't one. <laughs> We're going to do one more fist to five, which this is for me a uh, buy-in of students. So how engaged are your students in advisory? So they hate it, they're terrible, they, they don't like it. The five would be really engaged. They do all my activities. I see fours four and, and fives, a half. Yeah. threes, okay. 
That's great. Uh, and then I just wanted to emphasize, too, that these kinds of activities are great because they get kids moving a little bit. They have to think about how they're responding. So instead of just simple little, like, shows of hands, you can, you can change it up a little bit, which is something we like to model for you guys, too. Awesome. So speaking of liking to model getting up and moving, we are all going to get up and form a circle in the center of the room. If it is, uh, for any reason, uncomfortable for you to stand, please feel free to bring a chair um, and some of us can sit. But we'll all be in a circle right in the center of the room here. Yeah. Um, so like Katie said, you know, all the activities and the strategies we're going to use tonight are things that you can do with your students, right? You obviously adapt them slightly to meet your students and your classroom's needs, but um, hopefully you'll leave here with a big bag full of tricks um, that you can take back into your advisory and your other classrooms. Uh, so we're just going to play a little game of high-low. Um, and what I want you to think about is over the past couple of months teaching advisory, what is something that has been a great success in your classroom? That's your high. And what's something that's really been a challenge? And that's your low. So I'm going to give everybody about 30 seconds to think. And then when you're ready to share yours, you can just give me a little thumbs up here. Take your time. Okay, let's start over here. Is it Jean? Jean. Okay, <laughs> Jean. So um, I'm lucky enough to have students for two years. So my older students have had some of the routines and practices with us. And so I guess my high is that I love to see when they're taking that leadership role and they're remembering about things that we've done in the past and then they help coach the new mm. students. And I think I, it was hard for me to come up with a low, but um, at the beginning of the year, I always am trying to remind myself that um, we got to establish those routines. And then I, you know, as where I end the year, everything is so great. I got to rebuild, make sure that those procedures are in place so that kids can be supported to do their best. So I got to be patient. That's nice. my slow, I guess. Yes. Thanks, Jean. And if you could please introduce yourself, too, and just tell us your name, uh, where you work, and um, why you think advisory is important. Uh, my name is Christian. I work at ME. Um, I think advisory is important because it's kind of like a mentorship time. Like, I get to be a, a mentor, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's one of the things that excites me about teaching is that you can be that role model and that mentorship, but sometimes that gets lost during the content. So that's an easy way to you know, reincorporate um, some of my ideas into the classroom. Great. Um, and then I say hi and low. Yes. My hi is that mentorship aspect of it. Um, I really like it. I get to know more about them and what they feel and think. I think my low, and I maybe I'm wrong for doing this, but I kind of change up some of the questions, just fit what's going on in my classroom. Um, so like to, we did bullying, so then I kind of reshape some of the questions based on what happened last year at our school, um, and to kind of fit me. Because I feel like it's it's structured in a way that's not me, and which makes it not real. Mm. So I kind of change certain things around. So I love to hear you say that, um, and I don't think anybody, including the lovely lady in the room who helped write some of the curricular resources you're using, would say it's wrong um, to adapt what you've been given to meet your classroom needs. Um, advisory is a very personal thing, so nobody can hand you a booklet and say, yeah. now build relationships with your students, go, right? right? So what you're saying is very authentic and very right on, which is I take what I'm given and I make it meet my students' needs and my own needs so that it's about us. Um, so that's great. Thanks. Come on, Nick. <laughs> um, my high is the same with her opportunity to mentor and also to okay. speak one on one with the students to let them know that I am a person just like they are. Um, coming from the background that I grew up in, low income, I also was a special education student and going to school, and I became a teacher. So that 
to me is telling my students, look, just because you're in a special education classroom, and special education was so much different in the 70s than mm. it is today, that they can overcome the obstacles of their disability and still be successful. And I like her changed some of the curriculum mm -hmm. for the bullying, like when we cut out the hearts and folded them up, I had to take a red crayon and trace the crayon of the, the crum crumple so that they mm. could see how many there was, were mm. and ask them to try to erase it so that they could re really see that physical part of you can't erase things when you put them out there. So they right. really got that and we were able to have more discussions today based off of the part and what they saw and how they can make not really erase it, but at least try to smooth those lines out a little bit. Thanks for sharing. Um, my high is one, I've had my seventh graders when they were in third and fourth grade. I had my eighth graders when they were in fifth and sixth and then seventh and eighth hmm. because I moved up with them. And a lot of things that we're doing in advisory are things that I talked to them before, back when they were in the younger grades, and they'll say, "Miss Jackson, remember when we were in there and you said this, this, and this? Wow. They're actually seeing that I wasn't just talking, you know, just to get on them or, you know, blowing air or whatever. They're actually seeing how it now comes together and how it fits with some of the things they're doing. It's sort of like what I was saying is being validated, mm. and through our discussions, they're seeing the importance of it. The low is the time, because it's like we get started, we start getting into something, and all of a sudden it's like, boom, oh, we got to stop, we got to put up the computers, we have to go to the next class. Okay, so, so how long low. is your class? Our class usually only ends up being about 25 minutes. Okay. Because of the way our schedule was made up. Okay, good to know. Um, one, or one of my highs, uh, we run in cohorts, so all my kids see Kelly and they see me and a couple other teachers and uh, they're with each other all day, their entire schedule. And it's been a really awesome opportunity to first identify that they didn't actually know anything about each other, even though they hmm. were traveling around together and then work. We did, I inserted a lesson with uh, stereotypes and the kids' names were printed on the papers and they wrote the things they thought they knew, they liked, didn't like about all the rest of the kids and then they got to uh, write their own and to see what the kids hmm. were assuming they knew and did not. So it was really, really cool to see them actually get to know each other since they're with each other all day. And a low uh, time is definitely one. We have 18 minute classes. Wow. Um, and we also had them last year, but it was actually like an extension of class slash a uh, sit around and do nothing. Hmm. So the kids are now, who are now eighth graders, were seventh graders and knew that. So they're coming up and they're like, why would I sit and talk or sit and listen to you when last year all we did was, you know, stare out the window and color pictures and not pay any attention to anything. So that's been a struggle. So changing those expectations. Okay. Um, my high and my low are kind of actually the same thing. So it's the door swings both ways. Um, the high is my group is a lot of the discipline, the kids with a lot of discipline issues, lots of discipline records in the past, um, working on some now. So there's a lot of room for improvement there and the community could be, the sense of community, community I can't speak, um, will be very good for them, I think. Great. And they'll benefit more from it than say the students that do behave and do, you know, are just going through the motions. They, they know to behave, they know the routines. Um, but it's also the low because it's very hard to get them into routines. It's very hard to get them to cooperate. It's very hard to keep them 100% aware of how they speak to one another, how they speak about themselves, which I'm uh, learning is a, is a almost bigger issue than how they speak to one another. Mm. Um, so it's definitely it's room for a lot of improvement, but it's also what makes it so difficult. So. Great. Um, <clears throat> I guess one of my highs is just seeing some of the students I have in advisory kind of seeing them shine in the classroom kind of after having an advisory class. Just see it, you know, just seeing that change in them after building that more relationship. 
has been nice. And then uh, so one of the lows that I think I'm experiencing a couple other people are experiencing on my team is kind of unclear with like the procedures and routines that we have, we should have in advisory as opposed to classroom. We're just kind of, mm. as I'm a first year teacher, like I'm comfortable in the classroom, but then like I'm not clear as to what I should be doing. Good. Um, I think a high for me is students have really found a way to take care of themselves and take care of each other. And so, you know, being able to be accountable for themselves but also to each other has been one of their strengths, I think, this year. Um, and then a low would be, I think, the other side of that is sometimes they have a harder time being by themselves and just reflecting on themselves and doing that independent thing. Mm -hmm. And if you could please introduce yourself and tell us where you work, your role, and why you think advisory is important. Okay, my name is Alma Uribe. I work at the Academy of Multilingual Immersion Studies. I teach mathematics, seventh grade social studies, and Spanish. Um, what do I like about advisory is just being able to have students not just worry about the right or wrong answer, as in like math, because they're always worried, am I doing it right? So it's more about mm -hmm. their opinion and hear, hearing what they have to say, and just them feeling at ease and not feeling like, okay, I have to, this answer has to be a particular way. So just seeing them be okay being in there. Um, my high would just be not be not always having a specific type of answer for all the questions. And the low would be not having enough time. Mm, okay, great. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Um, one of the things I like to do in a setting like this is uh, especially working with young people, is to take time for appreciation. So if at any point uh, during our session today you'd like to appreciate uh, something con somebody contributed, um, feel free to jump in and do that. I would like to appreciate, is it Marquise? Marquise. Marquise, uh, because she you know, shared something personal um, about her background and where she came from and, and how she relates to her students. And I think a lot of times in the advisory classroom, it's it's you can get really comfortable in that hello, how are you space, but getting your kids to dig a little deeper and share some things that maybe make them feel a little vulnerable can be more challenging. Um, so I love that Marquise just shared right away, um, you know, some personal things about herself and opened herself up to the group like that. So thank you.